You've created your racy chart, but now what? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to use a racy chart effectively, how to populate it, when to populate it, what a racy chart looks like in a practical example on a project, along with best practices that will make it actually work for you and your team instead of just being another document that sits unused. Let's start with a quick recap. What is a racy chart? Well, you will see an example racy chart on screen in front of you. Ultimately, it's a responsibility assignment matrix that clarifies who does what in any project or process. Now it's designed for project managers, team leaders, department heads, and really anyone managing work that involves multiple people. So RACI is an acronym and you can break it down as follows. So R stands for responsible. Now these are the individuals and people who actually perform the work. So they are the task executors. Now you can have multiple people responsible for one task. Next, we have accountable. Now this is the person who owns the outcome and has decision making authority. They will approve the work and answer for the results. Now this is really important. Only one person should be accountable per task to avoid confusion about who's ultimately in charge. C stands for consulted. These are the subject matter experts and stakeholders whose input you need before decisions are made or work is completed. Now this is a two-way communication. So you're actively seeking their expertise. Lastly, we have I, which stands for informed. Now these are people who need to stay updated on progress, but don't participate in the actual work. So this is one way communication. You are keeping them in the loop. So when should you be updating your RACI chart? Well, it shouldn't be set in stone. This is a living, breathing document. So update it when team members change, scope changes, roles evolve, issues arise, or during phase transitions. Typically, review it monthly for long projects or even at each major milestone. So how do you populate your RACI chart? Well, firstly, it all begins with identifying your stakeholders. You can ask yourself these questions to help you do this. Firstly, who makes the final decisions on the project? Who's actually going to do the work? Who has the expertise that you're going to need to tap into? Who will be impacted by the results? Who controls resources or budgets? And who needs to stay informed for political or even operational reasons? So once you have asked these questions, you should have some individuals and project stakeholders in mind. Then you need to organize them into logical groups. So the logical groups are going to be your sponsor, sponsors and leadership. So these will likely be your executives, department heads or project sponsors, as previously mentioned. So the, they are usually your A, your accountable parties for major decisions and deliverables. Next, you have your project team. So this is your core working group. These will be the people actively managing and executing the project. So as an example, your project manager it could also be a technical lead or it could just be a business analyst. Then you need to classify other resources. So these will be your subject matter experts, end users, support functions like IT and HR, and perhaps even external vendors or consultants. So once you have list of stakeholders and the categorizations, you can then assign your RACI for each task. So you can go through each task and you can essentially identify who will do the work responsible, who has the authority to approve it, who's accountable, whose expertise do we need, who's been consulted and who needs to know about this informed. Review the chart once done with your stakeholders before finalizing. So this will catch gaps and prevent pushback later. So I now wanna put on screen a practical example of this in place. So this is for a software implementation project. And I've just filled out a little bit ahead of time, though this is blank because we haven't populated it. I'll show you how you, you do that now. So what we'd need to do is we'd need to look at each task. So let's just take user acceptance testing as an example. I know it's further down in the racy chart than some of the other tasks. We'll jump into phrase three, but it, it will help me illustrate my point. So 
Who's responsible for user acceptance testing? Well, that's gonna be the business users and QA team. So this is the other resources. They are responsible for ensuring this takes place. So they'll be performing the testing. So let's just say the QA analyst is responsible for it. So we'll just put responsible in here. Who's accountable? Well, in this case, it's gonna be the project manager. So they are responsible, uh, sorry, they are accountable because they will approve the test results and own the outcome. So we'll put an A in here. Who's been consulted? Well, it's gonna be IT support in this case because they are, we're gonna need their expertise and their input on this. And who has been informed? Well, in this particular example, this particular task, it's actually going to be the executive sponsor and it's also gonna be the department heads. That's because we don't need, they don't need to know the results, but they, because they don't participate, but they need to be informed on the progress of what's going on for the acceptance testing. So how would we manage changes as an example on this software implementation project? Well, it will change during the project. Obviously as new tasks take place, as phases develop, that's normal, that's to be expected. You just need to think about identifying the need for change, discussing with affected parties before making changes to the matrix, updating the chart and perhaps even changing the version number. So you could even put something like version number in here or somewhere at the top to indicate what version you're working on. Make sure you communicate changes to the entire team and be sure to archive old versions of this RACI chart for reference. So just in a few examples of common changes, it could be role changes to some of the individuals due to workload, it could be new stakeholders joining, it could be scope changes requiring new tasks, as I've just mentioned, it could even be skill gaps requiring different expertise. So who will have access to your RACI chart? Well, ideally, it should be accessible to everyone involved in the project. So for this software implementation project, it should be all of these individuals and perhaps even a few more. You want to store it in a shared location like SharePoint, Google Drive, or your project management tool. Everyone on the project should be able to view it, but typically only the project manager or team lead should be able to edit it. Now, project managers will use this, chance are you're the project manager, as your roadmap for coordination. Team members will reference it to understand their specific roles and stakeholders will check it to see where they fit in. New team members will use it for onboarding and role clarity. So I just wanna leave you some best practices because this is really important for getting the most out of a racy chart. Firstly, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it with too many tasks. You can always add more later, start with a streamlined version. Be as specific as you can. Um, Review the document is better than provide input. So just make sure um, everyone who has access to it knows exactly what they're looking at. You don't want them to have to think about what they need to see. Remember that you can only have one accountable individual for each task. Make it visible and accessible to everyone involved. Just touch upon that and start broad and add detail as needed. So don't assign RACI to ongoing roles. Focus on specific deliverables. Avoid having too many consulted individuals as well because that will just slow things down and it will just mean a lot of kind of headaches during your project. Don't forget to inform. So this is where communication gaps can occur and it can cause problems later down the line. And lastly, just don't make assumptions. If someone's role isn't clear, be sure to clarify it. So this is your RACI chart. That's how to use it. At, at the end of the day, a RACI chart is only as good as how you use it. Just make it visible, keep it current and refer to it regularly. When done right, it should eliminate confusion, reduce conflicts and ensure accountability across the entire project. So I hope you found this video helpful. I've also got another video showing you how to create a dynamic RACI chart in Excel with drop downs and formatting if you don't have one already. But chances are if you're watching this video, you do. Let me know how you get on in the comments down below and I hope you have an excellent day.